Hey there. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm going to get started. Uh, a lot of you may not know me. Uh, I've mostly been in the Ruby world uh, and doing some uh, Erlang lately, but uh, that's me, a uh, newer picture on the left side. You might recognize my avatar on the right side. Uh, that shows up on my Twitter account. That's how you can get a hold of me. Um, so I work for Basho Technologies. You may have seen uh, in your goodie bag uh, a manila envelope. It's got jazzconf.basho.com stamped on it somewhere. So uh, make sure to get inside and get, get, uh, get stickers. Um, and so uh, I work for Basho as a developer advocate. We're basically like jack of all trades type, spe type people. Uh, we do handle support for customers, but also do things like this, come out and talk, um, and uh, work on all kinds of uh, random internal code projects and uh, documentation and whatnot. So um, I'm here today to talk to you about JavaScript apps on React. Um, so what, are we, what do we mean by that? First of all, what is React? You may not have heard of it, but uh, React, we, I usually use these three things. So React is distributed, it's fault tolerant, replicated, key value, document, database thing. Um, and the best way to explain it is actually through this animated GIF that was made by the wonderful Matthias Meyer. Um, this is a play on the React logo. And it basically shows that uh, when you write to uh, React, it's going to send out three copies of everything, two nodes around the cluster. And then when a node goes away, you're going to write to fallbacks. And when the node comes back, it's going to transfer data uh, back to the node that was lost. So uh, I think that's the best exp visual explanation of what React is that I've ever seen. Thank you, Matias. That was awesome. So uh, React loves JavaScript. That's why we're here. That's why I'm talking today. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, it means that key value operations are HTTP. So you want to store your stuff in React, you use, you use put or post. Uh, you want to fetch something out of React, you use get. You want to get rid of it, you use delete. Um, but the key thing about this, even beyond just using those four HTTP verbs we know, is that the content type matters. So um, you basically tell React what you're storing in it. And it'll willy-nilly, very happily, store whatever. Uh, but it also, beyond just playing well with HTTP and web apps, you've got MapReduce. So you know, MapReduce is a big buzzword right now. Uh, CouchDB, Mongo, Hadoop, uh, React all have MapReduce. Uh, we embed a SpiderMonkey engine in each, each React uh, node that you build into a cluster uh, includes, you know, by default, eight SpiderMonkey instances that you can run your JavaScript functions on. So this makes us very happy, right? But you're saying, now why should I give a care? Uh, CouchDB has that. CouchDB has HTTP. It has JavaScript. It has MapReduce. Well, we, we accept that challenge. And I'm going to throw down a little gauntlet. I love CouchDB. And I, see, uh, I saw J. Chris here a minute ago. Hey, hey, Chris. Um, but uh, I'm going to say that uh, you know, CouchDB has this, this statement where they say, CouchDB is made of the web. And um, I'm going to say that React doesn't need a, whoa, what happened with my text there? Uh, React doesn't need a Couch app. So since React uses pure HTTP, you don't have to have a separate abstraction to build your application. Be like the troll face. Um, so beyond that, you basically the reason why you should care about React apps is you can build completely browser, in totally in browser apps. You use the three things you know well: HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, you deploy your application with curl, or whatever HTTP client you you uh, you are happy with. And you do scale. So like this is a graph. Um, and I got to give a shout out. I don't know if any of them are in the room. Uh, but to Joyent, uh, this is a graph of some benchmarks we did on Joyent. And it shows, uh, sorry, the te text is a little bit small at the bottom of the graph. But as you increase from five nodes on the left to 14 nodes on the right, you get a linear increase, mostly linear, of, uh, of throughput. And the green one down at the bottom, sorry, it's not labeled, is the uh, performance per machine. So you see it's, that's staying kind of constant. But as you add nodes to your cluster, you're getting more throughput. So uh, if you're interested in using React, go try it on Joint. It's pretty awesome. 
Uh, so what are the kinds of things you might be able to do with React JavaScript apps? Uh, you could build a little intranet uh, portal uh, completely in your browser, completely uh, easy to deploy. Uh, we had a, a customer who was working on some kind of web-based mobile app that they served directly out of React. And a popular thing that, uh, that I've tried to push for is uh, using it for asset storage. So you could put your, uh, your scripts, your, um, your images, uh, to a limited extent, your videos uh, in React. And then if you have some kind of server-side app like Rails or Django uh, or uh, you know, a Java framework, which none of us use, right? Um, <laughs> you could put, like, you could send back an XSL redirect header to Nginx and have that file serve directly out of Reoc to your client. So um, I'm moving really quickly. Uh, I intended to so we can have questions. But I'm going to show you two sample apps that we've built that are basically served out of Reoc. They're all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, one is called Recon, and one is called Yak React. So uh, Recon is a kind of sort of like Futon or PHP MySQL for Reoc. It lets you show all the stuff that's in your cluster, um, and it lets you interact with it with simple key value operations. Uh, and that's built uh, mo using mostly SAMI JS uh, for the state management um, and various flipping through various pages. Uh, Yak React is something I wrote last year. Uh, it's an AJAX polling chat room, um, and it uses React's MapReduce to get all the newest messages and display them uh, in your browser. And it just uses plain jQuery with you know, regular old JavaScript code. So it's time for demo. Uh, and this is, let me see if I can get that a little bigger. No, that doesn't work. So uh, this is Recon. And this lists all the buckets that we have stored in React. And actually, if you can, I'm sorry it's a little tiny, but if you can see it at the back of the room, this is actually my presentation. And this Recon app and the Yak React, which I'm going to show you in a minute, is being served out of React. So uh, you can flip through. We can take a look at my, my presentation here. These are all the keys that are in that, um, the, the bucket that I stored uh, my presentation in. Um, you, know, you want to see the, the HTML that my presentation is. It uses POW, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's all the HTML. And there's a ubiquitous content type at the top. Uh, let's see. So you can you know, you get images, et cetera. So Recon is pretty cool. Um, you, so you can flip through all of the stuff you have in your, your cluster just to kind of see what it's, what it's storing. And I could click Edit down here. Like, and actually go and edit the HTML of my presentation and save it back into React. So this is actually pretty similar to what Futon gives you in, in uh, CouchDB. So the next one, I think, is, is the more fun one. And uh, in, it's uh, called Yak React. And in previous uh, conferences, we've uh, tried to set up people with laptops all connected on the conference Wi-Fi, which you know, is always a problem. Uh, at conferences, and they'd connect their laptops together and then jump on the chat room from their local machine. So they'd connect their laptops together in a cluster. But uh, I'm going to show you basically what Yak React does. So I'm going to put in my name and Sean at basho.com. And it just gives me kind of a blank screen, but and so that was a full round trip posted the, the message into Reoc, and then, um, and then displayed it back on the machine, so, or on, on your browser. So if you want to go to that, you want to jump on there and start you know, trying it out, you can go reocapps.basher.com and then port 8098 slash reoc slash yak slash index.html. And I'll have that link uh, later in the presentation. So uh, we'll check back and see who's, who's jumped on there and started chatting. OK, so we had the happy fun demo time. But that's, these are just you know, simple apps. They're derp scale. They're not serious. Um, but it's easy. So uh, the key things to take away from here is that React is like what HTTP should be for put and post and delete. 
It's really easy to build a browser side app that you store in React and you can deploy really easily. So what will you build? So if you want to go play with this stuff, I've just showed you. Um, again, I said uh, reactapps.basho.com colon 8098. Sorry about the port, but uh, I couldn't get my load balancer to work yet. Um, and so you can go see the slides uh, there, jsconf slash slides. Uh, recon uh, is a separate project you can also get from recon.basho.com, and I'll show that in a second, um, slash go, and then there's Yak React. So if you play with this, please be nice and don't hose my cluster. It's running on Joint, uh, but uh, you know, if you delete something, these things might not work anymore. So a uh, little plug here, Basho's hiring. We're looking for developer advocates and other type of people. So send an email to react at basho.com if you're interested. Uh, enjoy the stickers in your little manila envelope. And that's, that's it. Thank you. And I t I'd love to take questions. Yeah, we'll start here and then go back. Uh, since you were showing the running basically full apps straight out of React, would you put basically all the nodes behind a code balancer? Uh, and then how do you deal or do you deal with ACLs at all? Yeah, so um, React is, is, doesn't have any built-in authentication yet. So the question was, would you put React nodes behind a load balancer? And then how do you deal with ACL? Um, so React is designed to be used behind a firewall right now. There's no built-in authentication. But plenty of people have put like uh, Apache or Nginx or some other reverse proxy server in front um, to do the authentication. Uh, and, and you know they'll pr typically do like basic over SSL or something. Uh, but once you have connection, you can basically look at any of the key space that's in React. Um, and uh, did you get your, your whole question? Yeah. I guess, so when you're doing, when you're doing the Nginx redirect, mm -hmm. you would set up some kind of rule that gets it get through but nothing else. Right. So actually, what that when I when I showed the uh, XXL to redirect, let me get, flip back here. Uh, what that actually means is that your application receives the request first, and you send a, a header back, and you've got an internal location in nginx, um, and so it'll only serve gets. Yeah. Uh, and your question back there. Yeah. It seems like uh, Mongo is one of the favorites for like node apps. Can you talk about why? Sure. Um, so here's my other gauntlet to throw down. Mongo loses data. React replicates. And so uh, you should use React instead of Mongo. <laughs> see, see, see the victory baby here? He killed a node, and his React app still works. Um, so actually, I'm, I'm talking on Thursday. If you're coming to NodeConf, I'll talk about React.js, which is the, the driver, React driver for Node. Um, I just wanted to focus on browser-only apps. Question way in the back. How do you query data? That's a very good question. I kind of glossed over that. Um, it's MapReduce, so we can actually look at the code. Oh, wait, we're still in Chrome here. So we'll just flip. Uh, that's going to be too tiny, isn't it? Uh, here we go. OK, so this is some of the MapReduce that's in, uh, in Yak React. Um, and basically, you're building up a job, and that's too wide. I need to learn to do 80 line, you know, 80 column code here. Um, so in this case, we're running a map function. This is to pull and get all the new messages. Uh, you're running a map function that's stored in this bucket and key, and you're passing in an argument. And then you run a reduce function that's stored in this bucket and key, and you tell it to return the results, keep true. Um, and then you give it a callback. So uh, in this case, it's, uh, it calls back to this poll function and I did some function prototype bind stuff since I didn't want to inc include prototype. Um, and so the initial poll is pretty similar, uh, ex except that you uh, limit it to 25 since you don't want to get you know, hundreds of messages back and crash your browser. Um, OK, and so then, then once it gets the, the data back, and I'll show those map and reduce functions in a second, uh, when it gets the data back, it uh, runs this little thing that adds them to the DOM. So, um, and actually we can, whoops, we can look at those functions in recon, right? So, uh, okay, let's look at the buckets. I don't even see my mug. Um, so, I made this bucket called yakmr, which is just the map reduce functions. 
Um, and so there's this, the very first function that gets run in any of those jobs is this. And it just takes, when I say object, it just takes a React object. So that's the, the, the value, the key and value. Um, and it parses it, it interprets it as JSON, and then it determines if the timestamp is later than the thing you passed to the phase. And if so, it returns a value, otherwise it returns an empty list. Um, and so in, instead of like doing a declarative you know, query language, you're doing like, I'm gonna start with these keys, and I'm running through a bunch of functions that are kind of like a pipeline, um, and that's gonna return result to my browser. Did they answer your question? Okay, cool. Any more questions? All right. Thank you very much.